predation. An individual of one species, called the predator, eats all or part of an individual of another species, called the prey. Let's look at the interactions between predator and prey over time. As the number of prey increases, the number of predators will follow. But at a certain point, the number of prey available won't support the number of predators hunting them, and the prey population will crash. The predator population, now nearly out of food, will also crash in numbers. But as the prey begin to grow their population once more, the predators will also increase their population. It's a cyclic pattern. Interspecific competition is a type of interaction in which two or more species use the same limited resource. For example, two species of birds in the same habitat might try to occupy the same niche eating from a tree. And both lions and hyenas compete for prey such as zebras, and many plant species compete for soil or sunlight. Some species may be better at getting their resources than others. The competitive exclusion principle describes situations in which one species is eliminated from a community because of competition for the same limited resource. Often one species is more efficient than another at getting the resources. In order to avoid too much interspecific competition, the birds in this habitat may choose to do something else, resource partitioning. When similar species coexist, each species may avoid competition with others by using a specific part of an available resource. This is called resource partitioning. In the case of these birds, they will claim different parts of the tree. The red birds will feed and live up at the top, and the blue birds will feed and live at the bottom. By staying out of each other's way, they can both survive in the same habitat. Intraspecific competition is a type of interaction in which two or more individuals of the same species use the same limited resource, like food or water or mates. For example, two trees of the same species growing close together will compete for light, water, and nutrients in the soil. And these eagles are all competing for their different food types. Symbiosis is an interaction between two different organisms living in close physical association. There are three types of symbiosis, mutualism, commensalism, and parasitism. Mutualism is a relationship in which both organisms derive some benefit. An example is flowers and their pollinators, like bees. Flowers provide food, and the pollinators carry pollen to other flowers. It's a mutual benefit to both species. In commensalism, one organism benefits, but the other organism is neither helped nor harmed. Cattle egrets and cape buffaloes are a great example. The birds feed on small animals such as insects and lizards that are forced out of their hiding places by the movement of the buffaloes through the grass. It's a great way to get food for the egrets, and it makes no difference to the buffaloes. Parasitism is a relationship in which one individual is harmed while the other individual benefits. Unlike many forms of predation, parasitism usually does not result in the immediate death of the host. One example of a parasite is a tapeworm. Tapeworms live in the host's small intestine and absorb nutrients directly through their skin. They reproduce by making egg-filled chambers, which are released in their host's feces. The host will have a difficult time maintaining their weight, and it could lead to sickness or death. Now to summarize the different types of symbiosis, we can make a little chart to quickly show the types of relationships. Mutualism benefits both organisms in the relationship. Commensalism benefits one organism but has no effect on the other. And parasitism benefits one organism and harms the other organism. Thanks for watching this episode of Teacher's Pet. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Twitter at SciencePet.